The terms inquiry-based learning, which I will refer to as IBL, and problem-based learning, which I will refer to as PBL, are often used interchangeably, according to NOAC 2007. Certainly, both teaching methods have a strong place in science, according to NOAC 2007. Furthermore, both IBL and PBL require learners to be active and engaged, according to Di Garbino and Daly 2011. Both approaches also meet the definition of interactive instruction put forth by Smith, Lee, and Newman 2001 in that they are student-driven and constructivist. Both IBL and PBL stand in contrast to didactic or direct instruction, which is teacher-driven and more structured, according to Smith et al. 2001. Perhaps because the more active IBL and PBL stand in contrast to the more passive didactic instruction, IBL and PBL are often and erroneously used interchangeably. So how are IBL and PBL different? Well, in IBL, students focus on understanding why a particular phenomenon is happening. IBL has students begin by compiling observations and then um, asking questions about why their observations are happening, according to Caps and Crawford 2013. Students construct hypotheses to explain these observations, and then they design and actually implement experiments to test their hypotheses, Caps and Crawford 2013. Eventually, with enough evidence to support a particular hypothesis, students can also see how a hypothesis can be promoted to a theory. By teaching science through IBL, students will experience how scientists approach their work. Caps and Crawford, 2013. Moving on to problem-based learning, students can apply their understanding of a phenomenon to understand a practical, real-world problem. Savory, 2006. Because of the real-world nature of the problem students need to solve, PBL is often also cross-disciplinary. Savory, 2006. A framework for K-12 science education published by the National Research Council in 2012 suggests that a PBL experience follow an IBL experience. An example of how I use IBL followed by PBL in my own science classroom might clarify this. At the start of the school year, my sixth grade science students have a parachute unit. They are divided into pairs and each pair receives a kit. The kit contains a paper plate two paper towels that are rectangular, a flimsier paper napkin, cardboard that has been wrapped with equal amounts or equal lengths yarn and thread. I think I put two meters of yarn and two meters of thread. And the students are not allowed to use the cardboard or the little pieces of tape adhering the thread and yarn to the cardboard in their experiments. Uh, for adhesive, the students are permitted to use these sticker dots. So um, I can keep the adhesives consistent between pairs in this way. So students can't use their own glue or tape. They can only use these sticker dots if they want something sticky. And the kit also contains two paper clips. And finally, a little plastic animal. And the students have the task of trying to get uh, this animal to fall using the parachute construction. So what students will do is they'll design parachutes however they wish and they'll just compile observations. So a sample observation might be a hole at the top of the parachute makes the parachute fall more quickly or they might say that a parachute that's constructed with the flimsier napkin versus the paper plate falls more slowly. So uh, they just compile their observations as a class and we also compile a list of criteria for the ideal parachute. Using these two lists, the students then generate lists of independent and dependent variables. The dependent variables come from the list of criteria for the ideal parachute. For example, an ideal parachute would fall slowly and not have a lot of drift. So uh, the, the students could have a dependent variable of rate of descent or amount of drift. And then some independent variables might be the presence of a hole, or whether they use yarn or string, or the type of harness the animal has, or what the parachute uh, fabric is constructed with, whether it's a paper plate or a paper napkin, etc. 
So then the students uh, indicate the the interest they have in the different pairs of independent and dependent variables they want to investigate and they are divided up again based on their research interests into pairs and each pair is assigned a pair of independent and dependent variables to investigate. So one pair might be assigned uh, to investigate how the presence of a hole affects the rate of descent. Another pair might be assigned to investigate how the surface area of the parachute affects the accuracy and precision. So before the students actually begin uh, constructing new parachutes for this experiment, they will first of all have a direct instruction lesson on the definitions of accuracy and precision, which shows the importance of having a balance in curriculum and instruction between inquiry-based learning, didactic instruction, and then later problem-based learning. And uh, also I want to add that the students will receive a brand new kit. They actually receive brand new kits three different times. So the students have their brand new kit, they design an experiment, they collect their data, and then they write up lab reports. And the lab reports include their hypothesis, procedures, data, and conclusions. The students then share their reports and conclusions, very important, with the class, and we see if we can generate any theories as well. This concludes the inquiry-based learning phase of the unit. Then the students move on to a problem-based learning phase. For the problem-based learning phase, the students receive a brand new kit again, and they have the task or the problem of designing the ideal parachute that manages the interaction between all the independent and dependent variables and the ideal parachute will fulfill all the criteria that as a class we have determined uh, is best for an ideal parachute. And also to make this PBL phase more fun, the designing of the ideal parachute becomes a contest. So this is an example of how I use an IBL experience followed by a PBL experience in my own science classroom.